Hello and welcome to this vSuite version 0.3 video tutorial. This is the first version 0.3 video tutorial and in this video tutorial I will quickly cover how to activate the vSuite within Blender and the areas of the Blender interface that are relevant for using the vSuite. So if you've used the pre-packaged zip files available from the vSuite website and you have extracted the folder from that zip file and placed it somewhere on your system, on the desktop for example, then you can go into that folder and you can click on the Blender executable. And once you've clicked on the Blender executable, then hopefully you will see a screen pop up very much like this one. Um, the main portion of the screen is taken up by our 3D view where we can see our current 3D geometry. On the left here, we have an operator panel where we can see some of the operations or change some of the details of some of the operations we've done on geometry within the scene. On the top right here, we've got the outliner, which simply lists all the things we currently have within the scene. Um, and this can be used to select different elements of the scene, if we wish. And here on the bottom right, we have our properties panels. And for the V-Suite, the properties panels are really quite important. Is this material panel here and the object data panel here. And those are the main two areas where we're going to be um, using V-Suite created elements of the user interface. We also have, if we click on this little plus sign up here we also have the properties panel for the 3d view and at the bottom of this we will see when we have results to visualize we will see some options appear in this vSuite display tab now the vSuite is not activated initially when we first launch blender so we have to activate the add-on within blender first so to do that we can go to file user preferences and in the add-ons tab if we go to import export here on the left we can scroll down and we should see vSuite version 0.3 which is the version which is the latest version stable version that should be available on the website I've already got it activated so I'll just turn that off and then you click that to activate now that was very quick activating the vSuite for me because I've had it activated before. The first time you activate it, it can take a couple of seconds for the tick to appear in that checkbox. Um, there are also some other, if you're new to Blender, there are also some other options within the user preferences that you might find useful. In input, for example, we can choose to select objects within the Blender interface with a left mouse click rather than a right mouse click. And if you don't have a numpad on your keyboard, if you're using a laptop, for example, you can choose here to emulate numpad. Um, but there's lots of information on the internet, YouTube videos and free books and tutorials, etc., that explain to you how to um, get to grips with the basics of Blender. I won't cover that in this video particularly right now. So once I've activated the vSuite add-on, I can save my user settings, close that down, and uh, now I have the add-on activated and apart from the areas of the user interface that I've already indicated as having vSuite components, the main way we control and interact with the vSuite is through Blender's node editor. Now Blender has what's called a non-overlapping interface. So we tend to have areas that sit side by side and the boundaries between dragged and changed, etc. Uh, and each area can become any other kind of area. So I can turn this 3D view, for example, into all the other different kinds of windows with this little drop down menu here. I want to keep that as a 3D view for now. It's this area down here, which I forgot to mention before, is our animation timeline, where we can sort of specify the frames of animation. Um, we can change that to a node editor, as it's within the node editor that we do most of our vSuite interactions. 
So in the node editor, when we activated the V-Suite, two new icons appear in this row of icons down here. The sun icon, which is where we create nodes that control um, the sort of simulation pipelines or the simulation workflows that we're going to be doing in the V-Suite. Um, but the V-Suite has also created this icon here, this windsock icon. And here is where we do specification for thermal zones if we're doing a thermal analysis. And I'll come to that a little bit more in a subsequent video tutorial. For the moment, we're just going to deal with this sun icon and the sort of node tree groups that can be then created within this window once we've got this sun icon selected. So with this selected, we won't have any current node trees because we haven't created any yet. So we, cl we click new and we now have a new node tree. And once we've created a new node tree, we can now, with the add menu, start to add vSuite nodes, export nodes for um, sort of converting or exporting Blender geometry into a form that some other programs that run in the back uh, run, excuse me, run in the back end can understand analysis nodes to actually do the simulations. Uh, Generative nodes, they're not currently working in vSuite 0.3. Display nodes to send the data out from Blender um, for visualization graphically or numerically. And input nodes. Input nodes has a very important node, VI location. So if we create that, this VI location node specifies the location that our building or sits on the surface of the Earth. And that is uh, primarily defined in terms of latitude and longitude. Um, but I'll come into more details in the, of the VI location node in the next tutorial. But for the purposes of this tutorial, the vSuite has been activated within Blender. We've opened up a node editor. We've selected our main vSuite node tree group. We've created a node tree and we can start adding vSuite nodes. So I think for this tutorial, that's all I need to say. So thanks for watching.